Savage Solder has a long-standing issue where its U-Block 6 GPS will rapidly slew from the correct position to an incorrect one for periods of 10 to 20 seconds, then return. This happens relatively frequently, enough to interfere with about 1 in 5 Robo Magellan style runs. It hadn't made it to the top of our priority list to investigate until after Robo Games 2013, when the incident caused this unfortunate collision with a trash can. In this video, I'll be looking at this undesirable behavior from the U-Block 6 GPS by examining data recorded in a local parking lot. Let me start by describing what is visible on the screen. The upper right window shows a view from the onboard webcam of Savage Solder. The left shows a 2D map view with three unique data elements. The red line shows the planned path the car is attempting to drive. The blue dot shows the current GPS position as reported by the U-Blocks. The green polygon shows the current estimate of the car's position and heading. The lower right corner shows the current output from the U-Block 6. More specifically, it shows a combination of several NMEA messages in order to report a comprehensive set of diagnostic measurements. The top portion here contains some static information like the reported H-DOP, the number of satellites, and the reported position accuracy. The table at the bottom contains information on all the satellites in view. The first column has the satellite's PRN, or unique identifier. The active and status columns show whether the satellite is part of the current solution. Only if both are yes is it being used. The final column, residual, shows the difference between the predicted pseudo-range measurement and what was actually measured by the receiver. All of this data was recorded during a live run of the car. Here we can use a playback scrubber to move forward or backward or play the data at various speeds. In this data sample, the car starts facing southwest in a parking lot. It is planning to turn to the west and then turn to the south to drive between two rows of parking spaces. I'll start by playing the video forward at one half speed. The car moves along and as it reaches the middle of that parking row, the blue reported GPS position diverges from where the car actually is. Now that we've seen it once, I'll play it again at one-fifth speed. Watch the video from the car and observe that it does truly drive about where the green box is. It doesn't stop and start sliding backwards as the reported GPS position insinuates. Now we'll walk through it one more time, this time stepping 100 milliseconds. Approximately now, the GPS begins to diverge. Watch satellite PRN12 carefully. In the very next GPS update, its pseudo range drastically jumps from sub 5 meters up to 27. Then let's step a couple more times. The residual keeps growing and growing, eventually stabilizing around 50 meters. During this time, the residuals for every other satellite go up as well, likely as the receiver is attempting to compensate and incorporate the one faulty reading. Unsurprisingly, this drifting GPS measurement causes Savage Sauter's localization estimate some heartache. In the best case, it is just not as accurate. In more severe cases, such as this one, it can cause the heading estimate to diverge from reality. When this happens, the car usually drives somewhere you would rather it didn't. One of the techniques we're investigating for future competitions is to use the reported pseudo-range residuals to de-weight or otherwise compensate for poor GPS readings. Thanks for watching.